talking about, you know, how you guys can actually avoid, you know, relationship problems with assisted living facilities, especially when it comes to kickback problems. So that's what we're going to be talking about in this particular video. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to our channel. If you're watching this video in one of our TEDxPatientReferrals.com platforms, welcome so much and let's go ahead and get started with this particular topic. Okay, so let's get started, right? Now, around the year 2000, there was like an estimated 7% of home health patients who are actually living in assisted living facilities. And in around 2010, the study shown that around 7.5% of home health patients live at assisted living facilities. So as the year goes by, there's going to be a steady growth of patients that can be obtained at these assisted living facilities. So let's go ahead and share with you guys several tips on how to be able to create relationships with assisted living facilities and keeping it legal. Okay, so here we go. Tip number one, don't use assisted living facilities contract therapists if you have therapists on staff. Countless times I've seen several facilities require that your home health agency use their therapists, use the therapists of the assisted living facilities for services that are provided to residents. So even if you have your own staff of therapists and you are using their therapists, this can be looked at and considered a violation of the anti-kickback laws. Remember this, guys. Remember to use your therapists, and at the same time, if this occurs where they want you to use their therapists, to make sure that you are able to educate them. This is a good time to provide educational-based materials to be able to show them the rules of the anti-kickback rules. Now, let's say, for example, that you don't have enough staff and you would need to use their contract therapists, then it's okay to do it as long as you are paying fair market value for those patient therapists. Tip number two, do not give assisted living facilities items of any value or free services in exchange for you or your agency to become that preferred provider agency for that particular facility. So, yes, there are chances where our people are not educated about the anti-kickback laws where they may actually ask you for anything of value in order for you to become placed into that preferred provider status, such as that big lunch or that sponsored events at their facilities. Be aware about this. Be aware and just go ahead and give them some education-based materials explaining to them why your company cannot do what they are asking and why they should not be doing this and asking this of others. Your agency should not be placed in the preferred provider list just because you're giving them of something of value. You should be in that list because your agency provides great, amazing care and services to the patients of that particular facility and not because you gave them something of value. Tip number three. Provide educational-based information instead of offering free risk assessments and false safety clinics such as those, or the famous free vital sign checks or free vital sign assessments. By you giving these educational-based information pamphlets and by providing educational-based products, it is doing the same thing and you are actually accomplishing the same goals of promoting your agency's name and recognition without having the risk of providing services that may be looked at as a violation of the anti-kickback statute, okay? Tip number four, make sure that you obtain an authorization form from the patients, from that patient or whomever is in charge of that patient, allowing you to be able to disclose their information to the facility. Remember this. Sharing patient information without their authorization is a violation of the HIPAA law, pretty much, right? Tip number six, 
just because the other agencies are giving are getting referrals and giving kickbacks that does not mean that your agency should if everybody jumps off the cliff the cliff right would you jump off the cliff i would look over the cliff first and look at everyone that has fallen and make sure that me my company does not fall at all tip number 6 pay fair market value for any commercial space if you are renting a portion of the facility honestly guys if this is possible or i i would honestly say just don't even do it just stay away from doing anything that may cause this but i have had these questions asked and to answer them just make sure that you pay fair market value for any commercial space that you rent out from a facility now in another video if you do decide to rent spaces from assisted living facilities i'm actually going to share with you guys several tips that i have suggested that i have researched that you can make sure and try to live by to be able to stay within the compliance okay so that's what we definitely want to be able to be doing you guys have to understand that just because it's an alf facility an assisted living facility and you're not being referred patients that are you know they don't bill medicare or insurances that does not mean that you still cannot that just, that does not mean that you will be able to avoid you know committing some anti kickback you know faults so make sure that you guys are aware of these things make sure it's not just the management make sure it's not just the nurses the therapists but even especially your marketers are aware of all the different laws that are out there and what is entailed in those laws so i hope you guys enjoyed this video keep watching more of our videos that's our main goal here is to be able to give you guys great content have a great day